It began with a nationwide search for the best home cooks in Canada. You have to prove to us that you deserve to be here. All chasing the same dream. I want to prove it to myself, my family. I want it. But only a handful made it to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Wow. Where each week, ah! they were pushed to the limit. Switch! This is all you, girl. I want beautiful presentation. I can't watch this. All fighting to survive. That's beautiful. Win $100,000 and become Canada's first ever Master Chef. Tonight, two spots in the finale are up for grabs, and the four best home cooks in Canada will fight for them. Tamara. Oh my goodness! A driven special needs teacher from Calgary, Alberta. I gave up my career to be able to come here and do something different. She won every team yeah. challenge and never faced a pressure test. Blue team. Yeah! and wow the judges with her Asian-inspired dishes. Read my lips, I like it. At stake for me is everything. My husband and I plan on opening a, a restaurant back in Calgary, and that's, that's our dream. Marita, a stay-at-home mother and devoted twin sister. I'm doing this for my daughter. I'm doing this for my family. She's gonna represent for both of us. I would love to open a restaurant with my twin sister. The name would be Twice the Spice. Her Caribbean flavors. Wow, that is hot. <laughs> and grace under pressure. You're doing great. So far, so good. Consistently impressed the judges. Little jewels in a box. You could have this in a restaurant. I want the recipe. I am here to win this. The other hope cooks better watch out. Eric, a 21-year-old chemical engineer fighting to pursue his true passion. My dream is to open up a restaurant, be my own man. His youth and boundless energy. Whoa. Damn it! Ah. Have grown from a weakness to a strength. It's just hard to find something wrong with such a great dish. I find it very innovative. Even I would not think of something like that. This is the one chance I have to escape what I studied for and actually do something I'm passionate about. And Kayla, an ambitious real estate agent from West Kelowna, BC. It's a yes. They probably think I'm this blonde bimbo from a small town, but nobody gets in the way of my dreams. Initially underestimated by the other home cooks. Julie. I'm always last pick. Her food and fighting spirit. Come on, push. Oh, oh, I'm okay. Won the judges respect. You can cook. I'd love to open up a, a gourmet burger shop. Really elevated, something really fun and funky. That makes me weak in the knees. I will shed blood, sweat, and tears to win this title. Oh, gosh. It's intense pressure. We're down to the final four. Any one of us can go home today. As I'm walking in, not only do I see my mystery box on my station, but there is the biggest mystery box standing behind the judges today. Congratulations. You are the top four remaining in MasterChef Canada. It's a huge achievement. And to honor that, your last mystery box is also huge. And not just in size. The implications are also enormous. The person who makes the worst dish will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen immediately. I thought it was a happy mystery box where nobody gets eliminated. This mystery box is definitely a game changer. It's our biggest and most intimidating mystery box yet. Joe Bastianich. Hi, guys. An idol of mine. I'm super intimidated to cook for him. Pretty amazing. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. He's poised. He's elegant. I think I'm a starstruck. For the toughest mystery box challenge yet, we've invited the toughest judge from MasterChef US. You have made it to the final four of MasterChef Canada. And that is a testament to your ability to cook great food and to partake in one of the greatest culinary challenges in the entire world. So congratulations to you all. Joe came out of the big mystery box. Now it's time to find out what's in yours. One. Two. Three. Lift. Everything contained in your mystery box has been handpicked by me. I've given you the king of all Italian cheeses, Grano Padano. Tender veal, calamari, pork sausage, and pancetta, fresh burrata, 
and from my vineyard, a wine I make myself in northeastern Italy called Vespa Bianco. That's for cooking, not drinking. These ingredients are like top dog ingredients, like best of the best. Very Italian. Simple, but they have to be done the right way. Whoever wins this mystery box will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. You have 60 minutes to cook something Italian-inspired. Impress Joe Bastianich and keep you in this competition. Your time starts now. I am absolutely cooking for my life today. Somebody's going home, and it's not going to be me, that's for sure. Just think about my kids and why I'm here and what I'm supposed to be doing here. Just trying to do my best. There's so much good stuff in that box between the veal, the sausage, the cheese, the grana padano. You could make fresh pasta. You could do a classic veal dish. The opportunities are limitless. I'm making veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel, fried capers, a little tomato salad, and I'll be right back. <laughs> if they overcomplicate it, I think that could be a big problem for them. You got to keep things pure and simple. With great classic Italian ingredients like this, it's often a case of less is more. Less is more. more. Super excited and nervous at the same time. I'm going to go straight Italian today. Fresh pasta, tomato sauce, freshly chopped basil. Make a fresh pasta for an Italian. You know, there's always been a century debate about who invented the pasta, the Chinese or the Italians. Well, that's you not know, much of a debate. You know, since you guys copy our pasta, <laughs> we just copy your handbags. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for, for me, it would just be pasta. Just pasta. Pasta, nice tomato sauce. Simple. Thing. I'm just most worried about the dish tasting good. It's just how everything will come together. My pan is smoking because I overheated it too long, so I get rid of it. I'm dying inside. I'm going crazy inside. I'm thinking, OK, next step, next step, next step. Hi, Marita. Hi, Chef. So what are you making? Mediterranean stew mm -hmm. with calamari, and I'm going to do a roti, Trinidadian bread. A roti? Are you from Trinidad? I am from Trinidad, yes, wow. Chef. I hope that I can impress you today with a little Trinidadian Italian fusion. Do I want fusion, or do I want, like, pure Italian food? Like... I think you want to see a little bit of us an important mystery box, someone's going home as well. You were number one or are you number four? I would like to say that I'm number one. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. All right, Eric, how you doing? Good, how are you, Chef? Today I'm going to try and go a little more simple. I don't want to be super chaotic in front of Joe. What's in the tomato sauce? Just the tomatoes? Just the sunrise on the tomatoes? No, I'm gonna, I have the infused flavor from the sausage. Uh-huh. And you're going to put the garlic. Is there a vampire convention happening? You're going to saute the onion and all that pork fat? Yes. A little heavy, no? Everything I was doing for my sauce, you questioned. You're going to put some wine in it? It's too late now. Never too late, my friend. Fuck that. I think Eric's going to have a problem with keeping it simple, and I think that he's going to go home. OK, Tamara, what do you got going on? What are you going to make? Uh, I'm going to do uh, veal uh, loin medallions with a spatzel. Chef, I do fusion. You do fusion? Yes, chef. Fusion without confusion. Yeah, absolutely, chef. Where's your veal wine? Hopefully that's cooking already. In about five minutes, I'm going to put it on. So you haven't started cooking the veal or veal wine yet? No, chef. I'm from Alberta, so I'm very familiar with proteins. I think that's definitely one of my strong points. I'm a very positive person, but, you know, one dish will send you home. Good luck. Hi, Kayla. So what are you making? I'm making a stuffed veal loin. Stuffed with what? The Parmesan cheese, burrata, basil, some rendered down pancetta, and a little bit of chili flakes. Where's your veal one? Did you, it's, did you I just it popped it in the oven. Yeah, it's, it's in stuffed. The oven? It's in, in the oven. I butter basted it. Very Frenchy, very fancy. We think Italian food, you think simple. All of a sudden, you're like butterflying a veal loin and filling it and stuffing it. it seems very ambitious. You know, I just really want to impress you. Somebody's going home. And there's only four of us. I mean, those odds aren't good. At the end of the day, that veal has to deliver. Absolutely, Chef. You can talk the talk. I hope you can walk the walk. The top four home cooks are facing their toughest challenge yet, battling to impress guest judge Joe Bastianich. You can talk the talk. I hope you can walk the walk. In a surprise twist, the home cook with the weakest mystery box dish will be eliminated. Who's going home today? Eric. Ten minutes remaining. So some very interesting things happening out there. At this point, I think Kayla, if she can pull off the stuffed veal, and if it's still pink and moist in the middle, that would be very impressive, but very, very, very ambitious. 
I'm really interested in trying Marita's roti. She's frying it off in a little skillet pan right there, and uh, by the look on her face, she seemed to be quite pleased with it so far. Eric, who's gone the traditional route, I think he's a little bit confused with what Italian, simple Italian pasta means. Like, I've seen a lot of raw garlic. You have just one minute left. Worried about overcooking the calamari. It's my biggest concern. I need to make sure that that calamari is cooked perfectly, because if I don't, I may be leaving the Master Chef Canada kitchen. Last touches. Want to see good-looking plates? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Hands in the air, everybody. Good job. There's always a chance in top four to go home, and I took a risk. I hope it paid off. I kept it simple today. I don't want to seem very frantic in front of Joe. He doesn't know I'm, like, crazy yet, so... I don't usually cook Italian. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that it was cooked well. You never know. The first dish we would like to try is you, Marita. Please bring your dish up. Everything's riding on the calamari. I am so nervous. OK, Marita, tell me about the dish. I did a Mediterranean calamari stew, a little bit of capas, and a roti with olives and fresh parsley. The calamari is cooked perfectly. Still very, very moist, very delicate. The tomato stew has very nice, fresh flavors. You taste the olives, you taste the onions, you taste garlic, a lot of garlic for me. It's a very, very good expression of ingredients. And I think, quite frankly, it comes together really, really strong. Good job. Thank you. Well, the dish looks beautiful. Thank you, chef. I think you've honored Italian ingredients really well here. I like the fact that you added something that's from you, which is the roti. Very strong dish. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I am so relieved that it's cooked right. Eric, please bring your dish up. Pasta and tomato sauce could seem too simple and underwhelming, and it could definitely send me home. Tell me about the dish. It's homemade fettuccine, sausage, and crushed tomato sauce topped with basil. It's pretty simple, though. Did you want to stay simple, or were you trying to impress? Um, I usually overcomplicate things. Today, I thought I'd stick with clean flavors. It does kind of come together as a pasta dish. It has good flavor. Try it. What do you think? Say you were in my restaurant. What would you pay for that? $15. $15? $20. Are you overvaluing yourself? Uh, Let's see what they say. I'm really happy this time you kept it simple. Yes, Chef. But if you're going to charge 20 bucks for that pasta, that pasta better be right on. And I mean from the sauce to the noodle. Texture, consistency, you hit it right on. I would say it's a very nice fish. Thank you. Kayla, could you please come with your dish? This dish could either shoot me up into top three, or it could send me home. Tell me about your dish. Stuffed veal loin with cheese, olive tapenade, crispy fried capers. Very tricky to get a stuffed veal loin. Perfect. How did you want to cook it? Medium rare, medium? Uh, medium. 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 Yeah. Let's see. Not bad. It's a medium. True medium. So you nailed the temperature. You were able to get a nice seasoned crust on the outside. The filling, I take it or leave it. The pinkness of the veal in the center is spot on. And it's moist and tender and really quite flavorful. You think you made any mistakes here? The fact there's no starch anywhere to be found. I think that it was a risk. And I think if you conceptualize a dish correctly, you don't always need starch. You nailed the cooking here. The color is perfect. It's rested, basted it properly. You think this dish is going to take you to the next level? I hope so, chef. 
I don't want to be too confident, but I think I have impressed them. Okay, tomorrow will you please bring your dish up? Tamara, tell me about it. Veal loin boiled and pan fried, some spatzel, tomato uh, reduction, and a tomato salad. So what did you think of this challenge? I think it was a really tough challenge. I'm a bit creative, and I like to kind of go outside the box. And today, I had to stay within the box. This is a very, very ambitious dish. Showing off a little bit here, right? Uh, no, I wanted to. You're not showing off? No. If I... you're not going to show off now, when, when are you going to show well, off? I'm a bit of a poker player. I wanted to do something that is going to set me apart from the rest of them. You have a perfectly cooked veal loin. Thank you. What is that with you Canadians? We know how to cook our meat. You know how to cook your meat. <laughs> yeah. What did you season it with? Just some salt and pepper. I think that this dish shows your ambition, but also at the same time shows a bit of your inexperience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. I see the tomato salad, super simple, super straightforward, and super safe, which is a little unlike you. And then on the other side, it is far more gutsy and adventurous. Veal, nicely cooked. And I think you could have put considerably more white wine with that tomato base that you had there, more olive oil, and had a much more luscious sauce. It's not perfect, but it's a decent dish. Thank you. Please join the others. We've tasted all your dishes, and now we need a moment to discuss. Everyone has a really good dish. I do not see a clear front runner. I think overall, they, they honored Italian ingredients really, really well. Absolutely. I definitely wasn't expecting top four to become top three. I'm super worried about going home. The level was high good. overall, I mean, I yeah, have to say. Oh, very impressive. Everyone had high points and low points, and I think this one was close. It was a little simplistic, right? You get that in a restaurant, you'd be very happy. Absolutely. That was fantastic, so. Yeah. Well, Let's go break the news. Joe Bastianich will announce the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, but it will be up to the judges to announce who is going home. Overall, I was extremely impressed the way that you Canadian home cooks handled my favorite Italian ingredients. The person who made the best dish in this last Mystery Box Challenge, who is about to become a top three finalist in MasterChef Canada is... Kayla, congratulations. So very much. Thank Great you. Great dish. Joe, on behalf of everyone here at MasterChef Canada, we want to thank you for coming up here. Thank you. And helping us make this incredibly important decision. Thank you. Good luck to you, home cooks. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. May the best home cook win. Good night. Thank you. Joe Toyu, who made the best mystery box dish. Now we have a much tougher task. We need to tell you who made a mystery box dish that was slightly weaker than the rest. Please step forward, Marita. We have to tell you that you are safe. Oh, my God. Your flavors were fresh and bold. And your calamari was perfectly cooked. In fact, we all felt that you had the second strongest mystery box dish. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Chef. Eric, Tamara, please step forward. Eric. We liked that you didn't overcomplicate your dish. The pasta was simple. The overall effect was delicious, but a little underwhelming. Tamara, your veal was beautifully cooked, but once again, you seem to offer up two ideas instead of one strong and comprehensive dish. This was a very tough decision. But at this point in the competition, we have to eliminate a very strong cook. I dropped my job, I left my family. Making the finale means everything to me. I want to prove it to myself, my family, I want it. And the home cook leaving right now is Tamara. Oh my God. Tamara.
Tamara, you used to be a professional poker player, and for a long time, it was hard for us to get a read on you. Recently, however, you showed us your hand with a series of excellent dishes. That's a big, big flavor. It's a very, very nice dish. It was enough to show us and the rest of Canada what your husband and two little girls already know. You are an excellent cook. Please come up and say goodbye. Thank you very much, Chef. It's been a pleasure. I cook with soul and I cook with my heart every single time. I'm going to try to impress today. I'm not playing it safe, that's for sure. I came here as a mom and teacher. I was blown away by the flavors. I'm a yes. <laughs> I'm leaving as an educated, proud home cook. My dad would have been so proud of me. He's the one that introduced me into the culinary world. <sighs> Kayla, Eric, and Marita, congratulations. You are the top three finalists in MasterChef Canada. Nobody wants to win this competition as badly as I do. I'm still young enough to make this my future. Stay-at-home moms have dreams, too. I can taste the win. I will shed blood, sweat, and tears to win this title. I deserve this, and I've worked my butt off for this. In this final elimination challenge, all of the home cooks are invited into the pantry, where Kayla, as the winner of the mystery box, will receive a huge advantage. Kayla, Marita, and Eric, you've all come very, very far. Congratulations to you. Thank you so much. This is your final elimination challenge. Only two of you will move on to the finale, where you will go head to head for the title of Canada's first ever MasterChef. No pressure. Each of us has chosen a very special ingredient. And Kayla, your advantage is that you get to choose the ingredient that you want to cook with first. Once you've chosen, that ingredient is no longer available to Marita or Eric. Kayla winning this mystery box, I am extremely scared. She's got my fate in her hands. Marita, because you had the second best dish in the mystery box challenge, you will choose from the remaining two ingredients. And Eric, that means you'll cook with whatever's left. I'm super nervous. Marita gets to choose for both of us. Kayla, who would you like to see yourself going up against in that finale? I want to beat the best, so I would like to see myself with Marita. Marita, who do you hope leaves today? Unfortunately, Eric, he has a lot more to grow as a cook. Eric is very ambitious. That's a great quality at such a young age. Sometimes that could also be his downfall. Your final and toughest elimination challenge is a shell game. Under each of these cloches is an incredible ingredient that will be the cornerstone of the dishes that you'll make in this challenge. Are you ready to see what's underneath these? Yes, chef. Razor clams. These fresh clams have a unique shape and are found on Canada's east and west coast. It's easy to overwhelm the delicate flavor. Dungeness crab. There's nothing quite like the sweet meat that comes from a West Coast crustacean. Only about one quarter of the crab is meat, so every piece is precious. And be careful. Cook them too long, and they will become rubbery and inedible. And last but not least, scallops. These beautiful, brightly colored, fan-shaped shells house the sweet, tender scallop and its roe. They require very little seasoning, but if you overcook them, they will turn tough and chewy. All right, Kayla, time for you to make your choice. If I make the wrong decision, I could be going home. I'm going to choose this ingredient because it is my absolute favorite thing to order on a menu, and I know I can make the flavors fantastic with it. So I'm gonna choose the scallop. Marita, you had the second best dish in the mystery box challenge. That means you get the next pick, the razor clams or the Dungeness crab. I'm thinking about something that's going to be difficult for Eric. 
I've never cooked with razor clams before. I have no clue what I'd do with razor clams. If she's smart, she would choose the crab. Because Eric wants the crab so badly, I know he does. I can see it in his eyes. As chef, I've never cooked with razor clams before. I have cooked crab many times. My strategy is one that's simple. Eric is a great cook. Take the freaking crab. Do not let Eric have it. Chef, I pick the razor clam. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I may have just given Eric $100,000. There it is. How do you feel? Oh, God. I have a perfect dish for it. Perfect dish. I am regretting my decision. I feel like I should have taken the crab. Not good. Bad. Stupid on both our parts. Your 60 minutes starts now. Definitely a little pissed off now. Rita says that I still need to grow as a home cook. Definitely got to prove her wrong today. Cucumber, cucumber. I'm not seeing this damn cucumber. Oh, sorry. Oh, my up here. I absolutely love scallops. It's my favorite ingredient of all time. The key today is keeping the flavors very clean and delicate and letting this beautiful scallop shine. I chose razor clams because it's something I've never worked with before. If I'm going to move on to the finale, I need to do it big. It's going to be tomato-based sauce, fresh herbs, garlic, scotch bonnet, lime juice, some nice mango in there for sweetness. This dish is going to take the judges to the beach of Trinidad. The razor clam is one of my favorites, steamed with garlic, a little bit of oil. That, to me, is simple, delicious. The real pitfall for her would be to overcook. I've never cooked with live scallops before or broken them down. So this is a big risk, again. Just got to get my scallop open. For a home cook who's never opened up a sea scallop before, it could be a delicate and time-consuming process, as we can see. These scallops are taking forever. I need to hustle. Today, I need to really stay focused and manage my time. I'm going to make a green Thai curry crab with a coconut rice. Pitfalls with the crabs, overcooking it for sure, and using a sauce that really overpowers that cr sweet crab meat flavor. So it is a fine balance. Kayla, what are you making? I'm making a seared scallop, crispy parsnip chips, got confit potatoes, a sweet pea puree, and some pickled uh, cucumber. Sounds ambitious. I've got to be honest, I'm a little concerned about the fact that it's taken you 20 minutes to open those scallops. Do yes. you think that you should have made a different choice? No, chef. I'm confident with my dish. Kayla has nine lives in this competition. That girl is like a cat. But Eric's looking really good today. Dungeness crab is a difficult shellfish. Hi, Marita. Hi, Chef. You have never cooked razor clams before. Wise choice? I grew up on an island where a shellfish was readily available, came fresh to my door. I mean, honestly, you know, Eric was over the moon. Crab is a very tricky thing to cook. Who do you think is going home? I would say Eric. This is my moment. I like your confidence. Thank you, Chef. Eric. Hello, Chef. Tell me about your dish, what you're making. We're going to do a uh, green Thai curry with a, a green Thai rice. curry. Do you think a curry might overpower the flavor of the crab? I think curry and crab go well together. It's not going to be a super spicy curry. It's going to be sweeter and like herbaceous with the lemongrass, kefir lime leaves. I like citrus notes with uh, crab. Who do you think uh, might be going home today? I think Rita's a stronger cook, so I'd like her to go home. Good luck. Keep an eye on the clock. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes remaining. Those are ready. Those are pickling. So Eric is super confident with what he's cooking. He says he'll be able to get the balance between curry and the sweetness of the crabs. It sounds great. I think Kayla right now is playing catch up. Her dish is incredibly ambitious. I mean, there's a ton of stuff going on. It sounds like too many elements in one plate, chewing up a ton of time. It could be the downfall. Oh. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, I just feel like everything's going wrong. My scallops took so long. I'm trying to act calm, but I'm not. And it's not good. Fire. I could be going home. The top three home cooks are battling for a place in the finale. 
but at the end of this shellfish elimination challenge, one home cook's MasterChef Canada dream will be over. I'm already behind. I need to hustle because I'm not going to have anything on the plate. Under this much pressure, I just really need to stay focused. Two minutes! I want beautiful seafood dishes! Eric's tasting his sauce. Yeah, it's good now. The reader's plating. Kayla, I can't see any components of her dish. She's gonna run out of time. Just gotta get this pee period perfect. I'm cooking for my life. My hands are just shaky. 30 seconds! Put those garnishes on, come on! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop! Cook for my heart today. That's gonna get me to the finale, for sure. This is the biggest moment of my life, and this dish is the biggest dish of my life. I just hope it's enough. Right now, I'm very nervous. I'm hoping and praying I make it to the finale. Eric, please bring your dish up. Tell me what flavors went into the sauce and the crab. Fresh cilantro, lemongrass, garlic, onion, jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk, and then a crab broth that I made. Nice little presentation, quite innovative. The only concern I have is the large lime wedges. They're large? I just think if you take a mouthful of sweet, delicate crab, you have this huge hit of sour lime. Not something I would have done. The flavors of that sauce are very good. There is a subtle heat, the richness of the coconut milk. It's all there, it's nicely balanced. However, that lime troubles me. Top three, it's an incredible achievement for everyone here. And you are only, what, 21 years old? Yes, Chef. It's incredible. Is this dish gonna be incredible, though? I personally think it's the best dish I've put up so far. So it's a Thai dish. Is it authentic Thai or is it Eric Thai? Eric Thai. Tell me about the rice. Uh, it's just jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk. Delicious. Thank you, Chef. I don't think I've met a 21-year-old that cooks this way. Thank you, that means a lot. It's incredible. Marita, please come up. I sauteed a little bit of garlic and some olive oil. I've got sweet mango, crunchy peppers and cucumbers, a sweet tomato, and a little bit of the razor clam juice toss it all in. I like the fact that you've used the shell. It's a great way to present, and it gives people an idea of what a razor clam looks like. Yes, chef. Those flavors are wonderful. They work together well. They have good lengths to them, clean, crisp. I do wish there was a little more clam in it, because there's a lot of garnish. The clam, spot on. I can still taste the sweetness. I'm really happy you didn't put too much heat in because razor clam is very delicate and you respected that. I like that. I like that very much. Thank you, Chef. Kayla, please bring up your dish. Tell me about the dish. I did a seared sea scallop on a sweet pea puree with a confit potato and a pickled cucumber, a bit of microgreens on top, and then uh, for some crunch, I did the parsnip chips. Before I try your dish, I just want to let you know that I think it's incredible what you've achieved here because you've been in so many pressure tests and you continue to dig deep, find a way to get through. You're a fighter. Thank you, Chef. I hope your dish represents that. Try that. You think that's cooked on the inside properly? I think it's a little over. 
actually. A tad bit over. Yeah. Overall, though, I think the dish has balance. I like the acidity in it. I wish the scallops had maybe 10, 15 seconds less in the pan. It's a very admirable dish. Thank, Thank you, you, Chef. And this here is the confit potato. Yes, Chef. And you confit that in? Duck fat. Have you done that before? Once, Chef. They're cooked. I was concerned that they wouldn't be cooked in the one hour time. And this is the pea puree, you say? Yes, Chef. You can tell the mint. It's the last flavor that I get in my palate. Lots of elements on that dish. Adventurous. Thank you. My scallops were in the pan for literally 15 seconds too long. And this could send me home. We gave you three challenging crustaceans. You all rose to the occasion. Please give us a moment. I'm feeling my heart beat through my dress. This could be my last day in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Who do you think won this one? I think they all did a very admirable job. I totally agree. performed at a very high level. I put a lot on the line for this competition, and I can't lose now. I think, in theory, the dish works. I think I'm crossing every single bone in my body. I want to be in that finale and win this. Yeah, we all cook our best. Yeah, yes. I agree. He loves scallops. Yeah, he, he wanted that crab. This is going to be really tough, because they're all good. It's clear to us. Yeah. This is the semi-finals of MasterChef Canada, and all of you standing before us are great home cooks. Unfortunately, we can only choose two of you to go through to the finale. The first person that will go forward to the MasterChef Canada finale is Eric. Yes! Thank you, chefs. Thank you so much. You were given an ingredient designed to trip you up, but you displayed a level of calm and control that resulted in your finest dish so far. It's been a roller coaster for me. I've been at the top, I've been at the bottom. I've learned a lot of lessons. This dish definitely proves that I deserve to be in the finale. That leaves Kayla and Marita, two very talented home cooks. Kayla, you are the consummate fighter. At times, you seem overambitious, but then it all comes together on the plate. Marita, you rely heavily on flavors that reflect your background, but your confidence and technique never fail you. This is a very difficult decision. In fact, probably our toughest decision yet. Pick me. Please pick me. The voice in my head is saying Marita's dish wasn't as good as yours. You're stronger than her. You can beat her. The person joining Eric in the MasterChef Canada finale is Marita. Oh my god. Really good job. Good job, baby. Good job. Amazing! I'm in the top two. Oh my god. Kayla. There are a lot of valuable lessons to have been learned in the MasterChef kitchen, and one of those was not to underestimate you. Thank you, Chef. You worked hard for your success here, and when you encountered challenges that would have defeated someone else, you survived because you are smart. You listened, you tasted, and you took risks. Please come up and say goodbye. Thank you so much for everything. You've been an amazing Thank home you. It has been a life-changing experience. We think yes. I just really want to win this challenge. I've really learned that I can push harder than I ever thought I could push. I can't let my team down. This is for the truth. The runaway winner was... Kayla. 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 Thank you, Chef. Wow, you're very inspiring. Kayla, Canada's first ever Master Chef. Who's that going to be? This person's food and plates are as beautiful as they are. And Marita, you're going to win it for your daughter. Congratulations, you two, OK?
I will take away the most amazing skills for life and for cooking. It was a good ride, and I'm gonna miss it a lot. Marisa, Eric, congratulations. Thank you, Thank chef. you, Chef. You're now in the finals in the biggest culinary competition this country has ever seen. Next time, it all comes down to this. Welcome to the biggest culinary event of the year. The country's biggest competition comes to an end as the two best home cooks in Canada go head to head. I am the best home cook in this competition. I'm not going home until I'm Canada's first master chef. Only one will walk away with $100,000. At this point, there is no margin for error. And become Canada's first ever master chef. The winner is...